Okay, this is a video about my CNC, my spontaneous CNC build. I'm gonna talk about the router I bought for the CNC. Now, I don't know a lot of about routers, so this is kind of winging it. I've read quite a lot and researched quite a lot. And I went for one that's available in Home Depot locally. It's about $200, and it's the 23 EBS model. And it's kind of a little bit newer than the one I have seen. I've not seen a lot of the big routers used on CNC machines. People generally go for the the one horsepower, like the Col Bosch Col, or the Porter ones that are more dedicated for CNC. So I've seen the 1617 one used in a couple, so that gave me confidence that they can be used. And this one has got a few different things to it. You must know that you'll have to do a little bit more tweaking than you would than with the 1617. Okay, so we're up close on the table now, and a couple of things to notice with this is it actually comes, there's two models you can buy, it's both the same router, but one of them comes with uh, the regular sliding uh, mounting, another one comes with a with a drop mounting that will uh, will gouge, gouge down, plunge, plunge mounting. That's what they call them. Now the problem with the two, the twenty three VS, it has the the RPM control on here from zero to ten, but the actual start start button is on the handle, so you have to buy a compatible handle, and it has a switch on it, and it conducts the switching mechanism through these contacts here. But it's not as simple as that, they have a safety mechanism. So in the actual handle they have some micro chippery and that prevents you leaving the, uh, the, the thing turned on and then plugging it in and it turning on straight away. So the micro chip says, hey, you've not pressed the switch even though I've just powered up and it prevents it from powering on. So you can't just, and also I think for, for, me, for stop metal getting in here and just starting it on by accident, you know, rolling it over in some wires or whatever. The microchip stops it, you just shorting these out as well. So to actually turn it on, you have to kind of, well, I, I'm planning on uh, having a look at it, but I'm sure there's a microchip board I can just take out of the handle, and then I can just wire in to these three guys into the microchip board, and then I can wire that into, say, the start on the Arduino or to start off with, I'll just have a switch. All it's going to be as simple as possible to start off with. Now, the difference between this and the 1617, if you've seen that used in routers, there is a few YouTube videos where guys use that, and it looks brilliant and powerful. And this is just a slightly newer uh, configuration. I think it's, I think it's just a little bit more on the HP, so it's 2.3 horsepower, and but it's higher ampage, so it's 15 amps. So it's a lot of power it can provide. Also, one of the YouTube videos from Bosch I watched, they said they've redone the whole shaft mechanism and it's a lot sturdier inside there, so it's a lot beefier than what it was. It has lights on the bottom, so as you was working, it will illuminate the area. And I, I found that's really cool as a safety mechanism because the lights are on whenever it's plugged in. So if you're working on your machine, if you're changing something, configuring it, you know never to do it if you've got those lights on. Because especially if you've got the power controlled by, say, the Arduino spindle start, then the computer could start it at any point if it's got power. So you can see straight away if those lights are on, unplug the power to the router so you know it's not going to start off. Uh, also, this, this one, I don't know if the 1617 does, but they mention in the video for this that it has a torque control, so it, it monitors the torque. So if you're, if you're set at like 12,000 RPM, and you're going through some harder wood, or if you're going through light metal or whatever, then it, it, re it realizes the the torque's getting higher and the resistance, and the RPM would drop normally. Well, it, it has a passive uh, micro circuit for that, and it'll try and keep the RPM uh, speeds going. Something with the mounting as well. I thought, you know, if you're really good at hacking, this could be a really good mount for the CNC. And I don't know if I'm going to utilize this or not, but I'm definitely going to take the, the circuit out of the handle and use that to control it. Hopefully it's as easy as that. But I really like this bracketry. I mean, maybe get rid of this. And this is like a quick, a quick locking mechanism. And it's obviously designed to take the weight of the device. And it only locks around this ring here. And the rest of it is just, uh, it's just the guide plate. Now I'm thinking, you know, I've not really thought about this much, but this could be enclosed and you could have like a vacuum on there and you've got a whole plate here 
to work with what you want. So you could in integrate, you know, uh, pipes for air or Hoover, or you could have the Hoover just in here and have it sucking it through this hole. I don't know, but it's a it's an option that you can set this as high as you want. Uh, if you want to keep it and integrate it, it's definitely an option there. Now quickly what I'm going to do, I was trying to keep this video short because it's just a, a router option, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do a test the, so I've put a tool in backwards so we can get a super straight uh, shaft there and I'm going to put a DTI on it and just turn it and just see how accurate that is because I've seen someone else do that and they've changed out the, the chuck and got, uh, I forget the, the name but I'll put a link in. You can buy a different chuck for the 1617 and it's compatible. This router uses the same uh, shaft as the 1617 so it's compatible with all those tools and the chucks. So yeah I'm going to put DTI on this and also I've got a little uh, crappy gadget that te tests RPM. So I'm going to test the RPM and it's supposed to go for, I believe from 10,000 to 22,000 RPM. So we'll put this gadget on and we'll see. It can't be trusted but we'll give it a go. Okay I've set the DTI up. I had to get a little clamp creative because I've lost my DTI magnetic clamp it might be in the garage and it's too cold to go out so here I've got the the router and a jig and it's uh, it's pretty good the setup you can uh, it's not really moving the DTI much that and uh, I can reset that onto zero So yeah, I mean, back, leaning on the desk is only moving it uh, a foul or so, but I'm not going to lean on the desk anyway. There we go. So I'm banging on the router. So there's, there's actually a, a, press, a lot of pressure now with the needle trying to push the spring onto this uh, tool that's inside the actual router. So it's... It goes to just under five foul there. So you can imagine if you have a if you want to cut a line and it's thin as possible, most accurate, it'd be right down the center of the tool. And this means that you include uh, the the tool uh, the tooling program this, that creates your tool path to cut your part would offset from that. And then it would think the part would be at that point, but in theory it could be five thousandths off that. At worst case, looking at this, which I think is pretty awesome for a for a kind of cheap mid range, cheap to mid range router. I don't think five thousand is bad at all, especially like for an amateur CNC machine. I don't think we're going to be able to achieve that uh, without some really good optimization of the structure and you know. You, you basically got to take into account from the driver motor all the way through to the tool. So yeah, let's actually just fall foul there. Let's try and move it somewhere else just to get like a second reading. But on my tool, my uh, my clamp setup's that good. It wants to go back. Yeah, so that's going down to just four foul. That's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Okay, let's try and get a, a speed test now and see what. I don't know if this speed test is going to work. It's a really cheap. Okay, I'm just going to show you the speed control up here. So at the moment it's on one, then it's going to be all the way to ten. Because in the shot I've got, we're not going to be able to get that in. Because I want to kind of do that. Okay, now I have this device here, which is super, super cheap. It's ten dollars. Off Amazon, I think you can get it for like six if you want to wait three or four weeks from China. So I've seen a few people using these and they seem pretty good. Well, I had to cut then while I went and fucked this up. <laughs> I broke it, I broke it already. I guess that's what you get with $10 test sensors. I think I can build one of these quite cheap. I've got some uh, hole sensors. I think there's an easy little thing to do. So the RPM test will have to be off for this video. So the future for this, for me, I hope, it, the stage one is going to be just using it in the router with on-off power. So I'll turn it on, I'll set the speed. Hopefully I'll have the basic spindle speed by then. 
so I know I, I don't have to trust the the gauge, and I can just uh, go off that uh, off uh, some kind of indication that I have self separately. The next thing would be to link the power start to the the spindle start on the Arduino, and that would be the one that I'll be happy with there. So I'll have to take the chip out of the handle anyway to get this thing to start and stop, and I'll put that to an external switch, and then I'll run that switch into the Arduino spindle start on the GBRL, sorry, and then. The, in the long term, try and find a, a good way of measuring spindle speed accurately and feed that into something like an Arduino that they could then control the... I don't know if it's possible with this one. I know you can buy a device where you can alter the voltage to ch change the RPM, but I have to look into that a lot. So that would be really nice if we get it so spindle speed could be monitored and controlled by something as well. But that's really long term. Anyway, quick video on the, the route to why I chose it. Love any feedback from anyone who knows more, you know, or any any further questions on it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.